All right, it's time to check in with Keith Bilber to see what kinds of questions that you have been leaving for me in the comments and in our My Two Cents at TBN.TV mailbox. Keith, have you got any stuff in the mailbox this week? Oh, we've got some good stuff. Timothy, first of all, hey, Mike, why don't members of Congress have term limits? Wouldn't that end the never-ending hatred I'm seeing from both parties? Well, Timothy, I think it sure would help. I personally deeply believe in term limits and helped pass them in Arkansas back years ago, some 30 years ago, uh, because I, th I think that there's no such thing as really permanent public service. It ought to be that we go, we serve, and then we go home and live under the laws that we put on everybody else. And when people go and they stay and they never go home, you know, it's often said nobody leaves Congress except one of two ways, the ballot box or the pine box. And unfortunately, that's all too often the case. So I'm a big believer in term limits, which by the way, we already have them for the executive branch. So why shouldn't we have them for the legislative branch? I think it would make America better. Well, Roy Sandifer, we know that a big problem in Congress is lobbyists and special interest groups. Why can't we kick them out of the halls of Congress and make it illegal for them to do their lobbying and pandering? Well, let me say that lobbyists, good lobbyists, really do serve a useful function if they come and they give you both sides of the story. I used to see lobbyists in Arkansas and they would come in and they would say, look, this is my industry, this is what we hope will happen. But our opposition will tell you this, and they were very honest about it. Those are very helpful because they're giving you uh, what they want and why, and they're honest enough to say there is another side of the story. Here's what I think we got a problem with, is when people become lobbyists and they also become the super donors to the campaigns, and then the candidates end up becoming wholly owned subsidiaries of the donor class. So I'd, I'd have two big reforms. One, if you're a lobbyist, you cannot be a donor. You can be one or the other, but not both. You can give money or you can try to sell your ideas for your company, but you can't sell your ideas with a check. That'd be one thing. Second thing is this. If you've ever been elected to Congress, whether it's the House or the Senate, you would be banned lifetime from ever being a lobbyist. Now, that would be really unpopular with some of the folks in Congress, but I'd say pick a... Pick a side. You want to be a lobbyist? Be one. You want to be a member of Congress? Be one of those. Don't try to be both because then you use all of your special access points as a lobbyist, and that's a disadvantage to the people who haven't been elected to Congress. Those are my two reforms. Well, Jim from Wabasha, Minnesota. Mr. Huckabee, seriously, you submitted absentee ballots for your parents and grandparents as claimed on a tweet? Is this a joke? A nice day in the rain to cast your ballot, followed by a voter fraud. Am I understanding the tweet? Please come clean on this. Oh, I want to come clean so badly because if you read the tweet, what I said was my wife and I stood in line in the rain for an hour to vote. And then I said, and then I went home and I filled out a stack of ballots and mailed them in. And then I voted my deceased parents and grandparents' ballots. And guess what? It was amazing, they wanted to vote just like me, so how about that? And you would be amazed how many people across the country called the local election commission, called the FBI and the Federal Election Commission to report me for voter fraud. Now, a couple of things. If you have that little of a sense of humor, you should never, ever, ever look at Twitter. Just don't do it. It's dangerous for you, okay? Secondly, if I was dumb enough to fill out extra ballots, I'd like to think I wouldn't be stupid enough to tell 1.7 million followers on Twitter what I just did. <laughs> yes, it was a joke. Oh. Help us, Lord, help us. <laughs> well, Emmanuel from Ellicott City, Maryland. We know and believe that all sins are sins before God, who is holy. For that reason, abortion is seen as the sin of murder, murdering an unborn baby. The unjustified killing of adults, especially blacks in this country, by police officers, racist men, etc., is also equally the sin of murder before God. So why are you declaring one party, specifically the Republican Party, is better than other parties because it's against abortion 
when the party led by President Trump's ideology has encouraged racial tension and division, and most especially against black citizens, and has led to the killing of a lot of them. Well, I got to tell you, that's one of the, and I'm going to be as kind as I can, that's got to be one of the craziest things I've ever heard in my life. And here's why. I'm just going to be honest with you. To say that Republicans are trying to kill off black people when it was Republicans under Abraham Lincoln who set free the black people under the Emancipation Proclamation. And it was the Democrats of the South who stopped and did everything they could to keep the Civil Rights Bill from passing, which passed because of Republicans in the U.S. Senate and House. And it was also this president, Donald Trump, that you think is somehow against blacks, who before COVID had led our economy to the lowest unemployment rate for African Americans ever, and who reversed what had been a horrible policy for young black men from the 1994 crime bill and passed the first step bill that recognized that you do not do good public policy by putting people for long sentences for nonviolent crimes because they're young and they're black. So I would disagree with the premise, but let's get back to your basic question, which was the difference between abortion and a police officer taking the life of someone. Let's be honest, police officers don't just go out and kill people. They just don't. And if they do kill somebody, and it's not justified, and there's always a very thorough investigation, more than you can even begin to imagine, if the police officer has done something that was wrong, guess what? They get charged with a crime, just like you would. But the idea that somehow, if a police officer shoots someone in the line of duty because that person is advancing toward them with a gun or a knife, and they're threatening to kill the police officer, the police officer has the same right to protect his life as you have to protect your life in your home if somebody breaks into your house and threatens you to be dead. To compare that to abortion of an innocent baby has got to be one of the nuttiest things I've ever heard in my life. So forgive me for not being more polite about it, but think through that a little bit before you mail me another question. Thank you, though, anyway. Good to hear from you. Well, Linda Bishop from Indian Trail, North Carolina, Congrats, Governor. Chris Wallace quoted you today by name in his defense of the Joe Hunter Biden corruption. You suggested President Trump should not bring up Hunter in the debate. You know you've bombed when a sleazy Democrat like Wallace uses your comments to make his case. You're better than that. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad to be better than that. And here's what I said, so you understand the full context. I said, I hope the president doesn't focus on Hunter Biden because Hunter isn't on the ballot. I went on to say that he has every right to focus on whether Joe Biden was connected to the shenanigans that Hunter was involved with, with Russia, the Ukraine, and the Chinese on getting money. And if Joe Biden got a cut of that, then that's serious issue that we need to know about. So I didn't tell him to not bring up the issue. I told him, don't make it about Hunter. He's not running for anything but his pop is, and if his pop's connected, and if his pop wasn't truthful when he said he didn't know anything about Hunter's business interest, that is a serious issue that the American people need to know about before they vote. Well, be sure to leave your questions, your comments, or your searing remarks, as some of you have, in the comments right below, or you can send them to my two cents at TBN. TV. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, then subscribe and hit the notification bell below. Now, if you didn't like it, you ought to find a Ben Shapiro video to detox you with more facts.